Just ahead on 100 Mile Meals, whetting your appetite, so to speak, we'll show you why taking to the waters of the San Francisco Bay makes for an unforgettable meal. A restaurant with a mission, the great taste you'll find in historic San Juan Batista. We'll introduce you to a company growing rapidly simply by celebrating a menu from our own sweet earth. That and much more right now. Hello, I'm Romney Dunbar. Welcome to 100 Mile Meals, an appetizing look at everything tasty, trendy, and fun. Everyone has a go-to place for a favorite meal. Our first stop is a Bay Area restaurant. You really have to go to, but you'll see why Alice's is worth the trip. Just as the classic song from the 70s says, you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. And here on the spine of the Santa Cruz Mountains on Skyline Drive, you can. Alice's is a great example of a destination restaurant, and thousands of folks take aim for it every month, by car, by motorcycle, even on horseback. You can be in San Francisco and be here in less than 40 minutes. Um, you can be in Palo Alto and be here in 20 minutes. Um, and you go from being in a city to being in a rural environment with enormous heritage redwood trees all around you and you feel like you're on vacation. The building was originally constructed in the early 1900s as a general store to support the logging industry. A hub of local history, it served the area, then called Four Corners, until the 1950s when it was turned into a restaurant. Today's owners, the Kerr brothers, grew up almost next door. A quarter mile down the street, and uh, I knew Alice as a kid. There was an Alice from 1960 to 1976, so I was frequenting this restaurant since I was probably about four years old. Our customers are like family, and we consider it local as the whole broader Bay Area. So people that come in locally, um, we treat them like family. The Kerrs are achieving the great balance of being a beloved landmark and a sustainable, locally sourced, and environmentally conscious business. We wanted to keep the rustic feel, but to clean it up and to improve the food and improve everything along the lines. We've made a conscious effort to have no high fructose. For us, that was a big deal. Grass-fed beef, locally sourced product, that's been going on since we bought the place. Family owned and operated, and a great destination, no matter what your mode of transportation. Come see why so many say Alice's is a trip. This location here, Silicon Valley, San Francisco, Santa Cruz, so you get people that come in, this is a crossroad. You're gonna be able to get some dishes that you've never had before and uh, you'll have an enjoyable experience. Waterfront dining is always popular and seems to add to any event, but how about dining on the water? That is the specialty of our next subject. You know, I think a lot of being out on the water is uh, getting that sense of adventure. You can go to a restaurant, you can go to a hotel, but you're sitting in a windowless banquet room. When you get out on the bay, you know, you take all the sights and the sounds and that cruise and just there's a sense of excitement when people board the yacht and they certainly carry it with them when they disembark. Diners have long enjoyed a view of the water with their meal, but Commodore Cruises takes it one step further. Even locals around the Bay Area, if you grew up here, you're not out on the water very often. And there's just something about being out on the water and, and getting that different view, that different perspective, being up close and personal to everything that, that provides that excitement and that adventure for people. With boarding locations around the San Francisco Bay, Commodore works with guests to pair a unique, movable feast with a customized menu. Chef Miguel Porras works hard to be sure the food is delicious and beautiful, a fitting match to your surroundings on the bay. Yeah, we're all about customizing events for people. We have a very diverse clientele. Um, we have a lot of different menus for people to choose from, including ethnic menus and gluten-free menu, vegetarian stuff. Um, so we can really customize and tailor stuff uh, for our clients' uh, tastes. So consider embarking on a Commodore cruise and let them turn your next dining event into a local voyage of discovery. A lot of people are interested in waterfront dining, uh, right? When you're sitting out there and you're looking at that one view. Well, we deliver 
that and so much more as we cruise around San Francisco Bay. And I still find myself snapping a picture of the sunset every once in a while, you know. It's, it's always different out there on the bay, you know. You always run into, run into new things. Um, and that, that variety, that, that spice just really makes it exciting. And I, I love being out on the yachts, being out on the bay and meeting new people. Performance in a 100 mile market. Performance Food Service Ledyard, a local distributor of food, equipment, and supplies since 1929. Family run for decades, and now part of Performance Food Group, one of the largest food service distributors in the nation. That new relationship gives Performance Food Service Ledyard the benefit of purchasing power and the level of quality control that vendors and their customers appreciate. Performance Food Service Ledyard views itself as a partner with hundreds of food service operations, and while earning trust, has earned awards. Performance Food Service Ledyard has been recognized both locally and nationally with outstanding sales and service awards. But it's not the awards that count. It's the reward of working with the customer to profitably grow their business. Performance Food Service Ledyard, serving the 100-mile marketplace. Food, fun, Fandango. Pierre and Marietta Bain, for three decades, have provided what they call a menu of the sun. Mediterranean dishes and seafood tracing Pierre's upbringing in the mountains in the south of France. We like to build ourselves as a place where you can go and kind of have Europe in your own backyard. It feels European here. I think the, the foods that we prepare, the dishes that we prepare, are really timeless. We have Salinas at our doorstep. We have the ocean right here. We are so fortunate and so lucky to have what we have around us. My favorite dish here at Fandango is the osobuco, and I think that our osobuco can rival anybody's osobuco. Our paella, I think, is a reflection of fresh seafood. It's prepared to order. It's our second most popular dish, which follows our rack of lamb. It's a commitment to consistency and not cutting corners that has left a lasting impression on customers over the years. It's an amazing feat what they do in our kitchen, and most of the kitchen staff has been with us for 30 years. Most of the dining room staff have been with us for 30 years. That speaks volumes as to what we want to accomplish and the skill set that our employees have. If you have something on the menu they really enjoy, and you can come back like a year or two years or even five years from now and you're still going to find that. Ain't no difference from before. It's going to be exactly the same or even better, so which is nice. We have customers that have certain expectations and we try to meet those expectations and that in itself is a, a tremendous commitment. Experience the flavors of Fandango today and join them as they embark on their next 30 years. We'll just try to keep doing what we do and do it without taking any shortcuts and do it with the freshest and the finest and, and go with that. We don't cut corners because my dad would notice. He'd taste it. It's because somebody's paying attention to how things should taste and look and be. I think the decor and all that is very conducive to a relaxed and friendly atmosphere. The food is also very um, down to earth. And the next big ingredient is to make sure that you do things always the same way. Food fun fandango. When you walk through the doors, it's like you're transported somewhere else. You're immediately surrounded by the garden, hence the name, Hardina. Everywhere you look, it's got a real authentic feel to it. California's legacy comes alive at Hardinas de San Juan. The restaurant was originally the creation of local artist and restaurateur Manuel Santana. And while Manny has passed on, his fingerprints remain. He means everything. To, to this restaurant, that's for sure. This was his, his baby. 
it's a unique place. There's not a lot of places in this part of the state that have the history that this place does. There's not a lot of places in San Juan Batista that have the food that we have. The food at Jardines de San Juan celebrates the traditional Mexican fare that is a crowd favorite. Ample portions mean you'll walk away content. We have uh, a cook who's been working back there for close to 40 years and he's perfected all of his recipes. Manuel Santana brought lots of recipes back from Mexico. We love for people to leave happy, you know, so our plates are, are packed. In addition to the great food and ambiance, Jardines de San Juan is a memorable place for weddings or special events. People love having their weddings here. It's a very memorable place for a bride and groom to get married. I myself got married back there four years ago. It's just, it's gorgeous. You know, the sun sets and we've got garden lights hanging up and flowers are exploding, there's fruit on the trees and it's kind of stuck in time, you know, and, and, and I think that that has a, a strong appeal. A feeling of the past with a taste of the present. Experience Jardines de San Juan for yourself. You don't see everything we have to offer from the streets. You have to walk in here and uh, almost seek it out. And that's when people find places they really love, is when they weren't expecting to find somewhere like this and they happen to walk through a gateway and boom, they're here in a huge courtyard filled with all kinds of flowers and a staff of uh, great people who are ready to take care of you and get you some wonderful food. The name may be mythical, the beautiful subject of Irish story and song, but after 20 years, Rosie McCann's has a real following in two Bay Area communities. Beginning in Santa Cruz, the popular downtown restaurant and bar immediately pushed the definition of a pub beyond expectations. And then with a second location in the upscale Santana Row with a more urban feel. It's a pub, but it's so much more than a pub. We're like a classy pub. You know, our, our food's really good. It's not just pub food. And we have all this great beer on draft, but we also have really good cocktails. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. We're not looking at the bottom line. We're not trying to say, you know, food cost should be at this and liquor cost should be at this. We're looking at like, how can we enhance the guest experience when they come through that door? The menus include pub favorites, exceptional burgers, steaks, and fish and chips. But chef Servando Maya creates a wide range of salads, seafoods, and specials to surprise newcomers and Rosie's many loyal regulars alike. For me, the quality of our food, I knew it has to be the best. So first I expanded the kitchen and then we bought from local, organic, grass-fed, anything that I feed to my own family. I want to present at my restaurant. We want you to have it the way you want it and to give you the very best experience so that you want to come back. And that's, um, that's what my personal goal is. And I'm pretty sure that's what we all strive for here. The atmosphere is always friendly at Rosie McCann's. And every night marks something special. Celtic music, open mic, trivia contests, and more. I'm happy that we have a place that is good food, good cheer, and a good beer, and so it's uh, just maybe a little something that takes the edge of people, and that's what we get, especially in this location. Flavorful, convenient, and sustainable. This is the thread that ties Sweet Earth Natural Foods together. And while it may not be a household name quite yet, it's a brand that is gaining a loyal following both locally and nationally. I think it really started when it felt like there were products I wanted and products I wanted to feed my family that simply weren't available. So the first step was really identifying that there was a void 
recognizing the components that were missing, the flavor forward, the nutrient density, the textural complexity that you get with grains and vegetables, and then something that was simply more sustainable. From bowls to burritos, Sweet Earth's products are all vegetarian, many non-GMO and organic as well, and made right in Moss Landing, California. It's the company's global approach to local sustainability that sets it apart. Sweet Earth Foods is so locally produced, test gardens grow literally in the backyard. There are two aspects about it. One is the local part. We are, you know, right in the largest food basket in the world in many ways, so we're in the right place. That is very exciting and, and we love the amount of local suppliers that we have. But the second aspect, and I think that in some ways may be more profound because we are a vegetarian food company, is that moving to a plant-based diet is so incredibly important to the future of the planet. For years, we've been talking about a change in food. I think this is the first time, in, at least in, in my lifetime, that you see this change is, is, is permanent and growing and unstoppable. You don't see us you know, free of anything. You know, we actually think the food should be great because of the stuff we put in it, not the stuff we take out. Everything we do is about using fresh ingredients, particularly herbs and spices. We use a, a tremendous array of vegetables. I love global flavors because I think today's consumer is more curious. They're interested in trying new things, and we try to bring those flavors in a very authentic way to our products. Sweet Earth Foods, coming to a grocery store aisle near you, whether you're just down the road or across the country. If it's Cornucopia, if it's Grove Market, if it's New Leaf, but now we're also, you'll find us a, a full array of our products at Target, at Walmart, at Safeway, and of course Whole Foods is one of our you know, largest customers. So we're, we're, we're not everywhere yet, <laughs> and we're not everywhere with all our products, but we're starting to get some good support, and I think it's a testament to the product itself. Born with the idea that food and family are essential to a happy life, Salinas' new Possibilities gives customers a chance to enjoy both together. Owned by longtime Salinas family, the Bozos, Possibilities is a more energetic little brother to restaurant institution, Gino's. Born in Italy, we moved here in the 70s, and uh, my dad and mom started Gino's, and uh, this is all we've ever done. I graduated from Geno's University and uh, been here my whole life. I love Salinas, I love my customers, I love Geno's. The idea with Possibilities is to take a lot of the same concepts that have made Geno's popular over the years and just do them quicker for families on the go. Possibilities has been an idea that I've had for a few years. We make restaurant quality food that's fast and fresh. We have a kitchen and a counter basically and you get to walk up and you get to make your own pasta dish. So it's created by you and cooked by us. It's fast, easy and fresh. For us, family is important and the dinner table has been something that has been so traditional in, in, our, in our family and in our life that that's where, that's where the togetherness happens, is at the dinner table and that's what we want to try to incorporate with our customers as well. So keep the oven off and pick up some possibilities today and relax with those close to you. A lot of young families with young kids that are on the run, uh, they don't want to go get junk food, they want real food. Uh, I think they're tired of the processed uh, stuff with high sodium, high sugar, high calories, and now you can go in and get a nice, healthy, fresh plate of pasta made for you. You got soccer practice, volleyball, take the food home, you cut out the cooking part, you have time to relax and eat with your kids. And I would love to see that become a trend. An institution in downtown Santa Cruz since the 1940s, Zockley's Deli draws crowds with its dedication to hearty sandwiches, Italian-inspired foods, 
and its uniquely local feel. It originally was a grocery store, and then just over the years it slowly evolved into what it is today. We are pretty iconic downtown. People come downtown um, just to come to Zoccoli's, which is really flattering. I'm born and raised here, so downtown has been part of my home all my life. Sandwiches here are the star of the show, and the options are endless. Classic deli or custom Californian. People love what we do, and you don't want to change something that's working. You know, we try to throw some new sandwiches in there every once in a while to keep it interesting. But we roast the premium grade of Foster Farms turkeys, and we use them on one of our sandwiches, which is called a New Yorker sandwich. It's a really popular sandwich. Um, it has homemade coleslaw on it, uh, the roasted turkey. It's on rye bread with some Thousand Island dressing. Sounds a little funky, but it's a really good sandwich. In addition to those sandwiches, you can grab soup, salad, and pasta, all made from scratch right at Zockley's in the kitchen. We make our own lasagna, we make all of our own soups fresh daily, we make all our own salads. Everything that we can, we try to make right here on the premises. We try to use as many local vendors as we can. We try to bring in a lot of micro brews that are brewed here in Santa Cruz. Our wine selection, we bring in a lot of local vineyards. So the next time you find yourself in Santa Cruz, take a number and try one of the oldest and beloved family-run businesses in town, Zockley's. Most people tell us that it's a place that they never really see any place else. You know, we always try to offer our customers the best product along with really good customer service. And that's what keeps people coming back. Pairing. The art of matching wine and beer with food. Let's take a look at a unique approach to pairing that's, well, a bit twisted. What do you get when you combine a circus, culinary creations, and exotic beers? The Twisted Tasting. For five years, Emily Thomas and the Santa Cruz Mountain Brewery have been bringing the event to the central coast of California and pairing delectable delights with beer. I love it. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. It's my first time here, Twisted Tasting. It's such a great venue and it's so much fun. I love the energy that they put into this. I just got excited when I saw the invitation and I'm so happy to be a part of it. I love this event. So I was asked by Emily to uh, create the food um, as the main caterer. So a little extra food that was going to be something a little bit more than what the vendors were giving us as samples. And so we created an experience around the whole Tristan Carnival, including the food that we were putting out today. To have, have all of this great food here and all these, all these fun breweries coming out, bring in, bring in really, really, really unique beers and people working together and trying to get some nice pairings together. It's, uh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's a chance to, to show what, what you can do with beer and food, uh, which, I mean, for me, gets overlooked so often. At times, these unusual pairings sound outrageous, like dark stout with caramelized onions or hard cider with brie and jam. But the taste experience, mixed with the backdrop of a flying trapeze, is like no other. For tonight, we were paired with Bonnie Dune Vineyard, and they're serving cider. One of their ciders has a pear, apple, and quince. So for our bite tonight, we did a prosciutto and manchego panini with a spiced pear, apple, chutney, a quince paste, and a little cilantro garnish. I love when I get the opportunity to really think outside the box, and so uh, what I like to do is surprise people's taste buds and surprise their senses. So we took kind of you know, greasy, heavy carnival food and uh, elevate it a little bit. Um, so carnival food with a twist where things are a little bit more fancy, perhaps a little less recognizable, and um, it, was, it was a blast creating the menu. If you love beer and fine foods, then visit Santa Cruz at the end of January for a twisted experience you will never forget. The Hop and Barley Festival has found a home and a spot on the calendar in Scotts Valley, California. Seven years and counting for this fundraising event for a local land trust that uses proceeds to help low-income families with housing. We were thinking of ways to uh, fundraise, and this was the first thing that came to mind. It was right in the middle of the recession, and uh, we thought that'd be a good way to raise some money. 
And also um, the craft beer thing was really growing in Santa Cruz. At that time we had um, four or five craft breweries. This was seven years ago. Now today we have uh, 12 um, by the end of the summer. The, the Hop and Barley Festival is a volunteer activity. So although some might get, uh, you know, a t-shirt or, you know, a, a, some food, that kind of thing, it's basically volunteers coming to support the Community Housing Land Trust of Santa Cruz County Incorporated. It's a great, great opportunity for everyone to come out and have fun, listen to some music, drink some beer, and not gouge the pocketbook. The craft brew boom is strong here, as it is around the country. California has seen the number of breweries grow from 300 in 2012 to more than 700 in 2016, a big share of the more than 2,000 microbreweries across America. Anchor Brewing Company has been an integral part of the, uh, the craft brewing scene. Uh, we like to say that we were the America's first craft brewery, so we've been a big part of the California beer scene since 1896, back when we were founded. So. To come down here and take events like this, since the industry's blown up as we see, is fantastic. It's a continuation of a tradition and you know an exciting new chapter for us. So we're excited to be here. This is our first year at Hop and Barley, and we actually just launched our passport program, which is very unique. Uh, everyone's familiar with the winery passports. Well, we decided it's about time to have a craft beer passport. This event is the funnest event of. We all we have three events, like I said, this is the best, hands down. It's the first event we did as well. Yeah, we're out here, excited to be here at the Hop and Barley Festival. Um, Lagunitas comes out, supports a lot of events like this. Um, so we're always, always happy to be out here, um, beer and a sunny day. It's a beautiful day, beautiful people, lots of great food, lots of great beer. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Performance in a 100-mile market. Performance Food Service Ledyard, a local distributor of food, equipment, and supplies since 1929. Family run for decades, and now part of Performance Food Group, one of the largest food service distributors in the nation. That new relationship gives Performance Food Service Ledyard the benefit of purchasing power and the level of quality control that vendors and their customers appreciate. Performance Food Service Ledyard views itself as a partner with hundreds of food service operations and while earning trust has earned awards. Performance Food Service Ledyard has been recognized both locally and nationally with outstanding sales and service awards. But it's not the awards that count. It's the reward of working with the customer to profitably grow their business. Performance Food Service Ledyard, serving the 100-mile marketplace. Thank you so much for joining us for 100 Mile Meals. If you'd like to learn more, visit our website. It's 100milemeals.com. Watch some videos and let us know what you think of the program. Until next time, I'm Romney Dunbar. So long. Brought to you by Performance Food Service Ledyard, the leading food distributor for our 100-mile market.